Hey, what's going on everybody? It's David Palmer, the Leo King. We're here at UAC 2018 in Chicago, and I'm here with Michael Luton, one of my favorite astrologers in the whole entire world. Thanks for being here with me today, Michael. Thank you. It's happy to be here as I am with the DLP TLK. <laughs> well, the reason why I love you so much is, number one, your horoscopes are scarily accurate. That's They're funny. so accurate. That's why I love whether it's your talks, whether it's your awesome horoscopes, and you always are a very visual astrologer using that, pictures. Mm -hmm. And your lectures, of course, are always building up in directions where I feel like a lot of astrologers aren't really going. You always go in your own direction, and that's why I really love your astrology. Thanks, David. I've been doing this for a really long time, and by now, I'm not interested in the superficial aspects anymore because I think um, my feeling is that if people get a touch of something that's authentic, not about me so much, but about them, once I, um, I have their confidence and I can touch into something authentic about them, mm -hmm. it releases them, they feel happier, and I try to be authentic also. When a, and we've talked about this. Yeah. When a, a, a presenter or an entertainer or anybody is on stage in front of people, the more authentic a person can be in his or her presentation, it inspires someone in the audience to think, well, you know what? I could be that way too. I could be authentic. And that's freeing and liberating. It makes people happier in the long run. Yeah, because I mean, besides just astrology, you have a background in, in theater and you have a background in, in writing uh, different plays and shows. And especially here at UAC, I mean, that's great. for yeah. many years you've done all the the shows for them, correct? Uh, I've done all the shows, actually. I've been <laughs> yeah. in every, uh, every UX since 1986. But I've also been uh, secretly, and, well, not so much secretly, but not advertised. I've been very highly trained in psychoanalytic psychotherapy. Ah. So I don't, while I don't talk astrology in my sessions, I don't talk therapy, I try to talk what people are at, what they're doing. And yes, I do have a disordered mind of mm -hmm. visuals. I do think visually and it's easier for me to think into in terms of picture than it is in a whole lot of words. So my stuff is simple, it's accessible, and I do the best that I can. Well, I was at your lecture. Um, you had two lectures. I was at your lecture, the first one, and you had brought up and, and it was actually not really part of the lecture, but you brought something up that I really take to heart, which is when casting a chart, especially for a person, to use solar astrology, which is understanding, of course, just the basic sun signs and how powerful they are and the, the understanding of people through their sun sign, which I think um, some people really don't understand that art, really. I absolutely agree. In fact, you and I have talked about this also. Uh, I was once on a group panel of discussions and when one of the astrologers found out that I wrote sun signs for a, a column for a magazine, he actually got up and walked off the stage. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was quite a while ago. He, when he heard that I wrote, I used solar astrology, he got up and walked off the stage. And of course, it caused a big stir at the moment. But like everything else, it dissipates and disappears. But in, actually, uh, solar astro it's not so much solar astrology and it's not so much sun signs it's actually the horoscope cast for the moment the sun is rising during the day it's there's true. a whole lot more to it yeah. and, and that, that anybody really believes and it's just as when I read a horoscope I never read a horoscope only with the time of birth I always use the time of birth right. but as you and I have discussed the sun sign and then putting all the planets around in their proper places is almost equally accurate. It's not so much great for predictions, which I should say, as much as we as astrologers have to predict, right. it's not the real value for people is to say something is going to happen. And I've done that, you've done that, we've made statements about the future and they've come true. Yeah. Perhaps we have a whole lot of things that don't come true, that don't get publicized, who knows that. But it's not really just about predicting the yeah. end of the world or the happiness coming. But 
people want that. They think that they're going to get a little more control of their life. If you, if you, what's in there? What do you see there from six months ago? Oh, six months from now. What's, what's 2019 is going to be like? And I usually say, the same, only worse. <laughs> <laughs> because the more attached we are to the outcome, the more anxiety we're going to have. And they, I, somebody wrote to me, a guy I don't know, and he wrote, and he, I think he was serious. He wrote back last week and he said, I read your stuff, it's very interesting. Can you, am I going to die? <laughs> so I wrote back, Yes. <laughs> and then a few minutes later I wrote, eventually. <laughs> but that is the only answer because we're all on the same conveyor belt, of course. Right. And, we're, and we get to a certain point, we drop off and they put a cherry on their nose in the box and that's it. Everybody, we've all got this. But in between the point, we're looking for some kind of happiness and meaning and fulfillment. You know that. I, mean, I know that. And I think it's interesting because I think when you do your astrology, I think, you know, it's much more than prediction. You're helping the sun signs and all people, whether it's just a general horoscope for all people, which I think the term is mundane. I don't like that term, though, actually. I don't um, like it either. I never knew what it meant. I just I thought it meant boring. Yeah, exactly, boring. <laughs> um, but Or when you talk to the sun signs, I think you give them, through your horoscopes, an understanding of just what they're going through in their journey and... The, the, the emotions and the feelings that they're going through in life that they are eerily becoming more aware of and that they're actually going, wow, this is really, really what's going on in my life. You know, I think that very rarely do you get the chance. You have to get the, a client's confidence first, but David and I have had amazing conversations that nobody else will ever hear because right. they are about all the deeper things that, you, that a lot of people are not willing to discuss or even know is going on. But we've True. had some, over the years, we've had some amazing conversations that last and they stay with yeah. you, don't they, right? Definitely. So, yeah. So I think that uh, what we're all trying to do as astrologers is free people from their worry and their anxiety, but not cheering them up emptily. My goal and your goal, Dave is a great cheerleader for humanity. But we both know, and we all know, any serious astrologer knows, that life is about suffering. We're either chasing after something yeah. we don't have or trying to get rid of something we've got. And I think that we know that it's not about cheering someone up because we have to be present for people's yeah. bad days and their good days. But it's not about empty, emptily cheering them up. It's about giving them a sense of purpose and meaning that astrology can produ produce and provide. Right. But it's not just cheering anybody up. We have to also be present for the transformations that people go through. And they're not easy and they're not always pleasant. And to pretend that they are is childish. Yeah, no, it's very true. And I think that you also help people. I mean, your Vanity Fair article which I've read many times in, in 2006 about a lot of this Pluto Capricorn transit coming that we've been going through, really I think to help people kind of get prepared for what's coming, but it, 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 it's not so much of a predictive way, it's, it's more of like helping people understand these things and these you know, events that happen in history and you're very good about understanding how to teach people about you know like what what cycles are repeating and how they're going to affect humanity and you do a very really great job of making it very malleable very easy to ingest when i wrote that piece and when vanity fair first bought it was uh, uh i think october of 2006 and they finally agreed to publish it at the last minute they said, we can't, we have no space. And so my agent said, tell them, call them back and tell them to take out your column that month and put the piece in. So they'll have, they, they did. And they, they said to me, I hope you're wrong. But they didn't really mean that. They wanted it to be accurate, but right. they were very scared what was going to happen. And I, myself, I couldn't quite believe that it came out to be so strong a piece that 
it's still on their website 12 years later. And uh, I couldn't imagine how many views that, that article has probably got. I mean, oh, I honestly, have no idea. It's, it's I'm, probably massive. By now, after 12 years, yeah. I guess so, yeah. And people are saying, how did you know that? And to me, it's not like I know it. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it because when Pluto came into Capricorn, I knew that had, it's not about just Capricorn, but it was about the time and the period that it was happening that I said there was going to be this sort of an upheaval and that political parties would completely dissolve and there would people be across the aisle from each other and yeah. there would be a lot of defections yeah. and there's a lot of, that's all happening now. But it's part of the evolution of the United States and a part evolution of the world because what happens to the United States happens to the world, of course. So it is about a transportation, transformation that we are all in the middle of having. And thanks for bringing it up. We're all, we, it's, we, we, it, it's something we cannot escape. And it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. You know what? If the world ends and there's nothing left but ringing telephones and cockroaches, you can be sure that a Scorpio will rise out of the rubble <laughs> looking for company. So it's, it's something that, this is a cycle, it's a dangerous cycle. A door is opening now in 2018 and a lot of evil ha wants to rush in. Yeah. And people, I, I, I can say this without hubris, that all of us as astrologers, are, we have our shoulder against that door. And we want yeah. to make sure that what gets into this country and what gets into this world and what gets into the human consciousness is about the light that, that keeps us alive, alive yeah. and out of the dark. And there is something happening, something huge, something monumental that we've never been able to understand before. And I think as astrologers, this conference, this UAC conference, I think we have 2,000 people here, something no, huge. I, I think it's actually three. Is it three? Mm -hmm. Somebody said yeah. it was 3,000? It's amazing, and although it's not the most intimate moment we've ever shared, it's great when you can be with somebody right. for just a couple of minutes and touch into them and they into you. And that's really what I believe that this conference is on the eve of a great transformation in this world. Yeah. And all these people here know it, and that's why they showed up. Well, I think you bring up awesome points about this huge transformation, and I think the way that you've been able to help people interpret it is because the way I look at you is, you're not like every other astrologer. You're open-minded in the most widest ways in pulling in information that you see throughout the world or like in your presentation, this really weird asteroid that just came in oh, and God. the interpretations oh, of how you're able to just stay open-minded, see what's going on and put the pieces together very well. And I, I think course, that's what all, works for you so well, you know? Well, it's all in, in my mind. I, I think these things are true and I've been lucky enough that they come true. Right. This so-called asteroid that came in from another solar system, that's big, that's yeah, huge. I know it's huge. It, it shows that we've been discovered. Yeah. We have been discovered. So people say, oh, it's just an asteroid. Oh yeah, where it's from? Another solar system, hello? Hello, yeah. Okay. So that may not be the probe ship or the advanced ship that they're going to come and right. it's nothing like that. It just shows that when something this, this foreign and this Pluto transit predicted strange encounters because the last time it happened like this, uh, uh, the, the American... Oh, was it 1760, right? It was, 1760 yeah. and then 1521. Right. All the way back through history, when this yeah. planet has happened, there have been invasions, there have been dis, dis, displacements. Yeah. The, the idea of eminent domain, when they said, oh, yeah. that's what they said when they got to America. The settlers got here, they got off the shores, yeah. and they're the natives, and they were saying, wow, this place is beautiful, get out. <laughs> get out. <laughs> and that's been how this country has grown and developed on somebody else's lands. Who owns the land? That's another question of Pluto and Capricorn. Who really owns land? Yeah. Who owns the earth? 
And you have a lot of people now that would like to own the earth. Right. They, would, they, they would like to own the earth. They really, literally own the world. Yeah. There's a tremendous competition now for owning all the resources, the water, the food. That's not just paranoid, crazy people. No. And now there's even going to be a war Maybe not a gun war, but there's going to be a certainly a competitive war for mining the resources yes. on the moon and other planets. And it's not just crazy to think that. That's already happening. And it's, yeah, and if you connect this with how ironic we just got the Pluto pictures for the first time in our life, right? Yes. Right we last did. year. And how Voyager 1 is at that heliosphere, right? Right, the, the edge between leaving our solar system for the first time. And they don't really know how the judgment of how deep that goes till it leaves, but we're at this precipice where it's interesting, this new asteroid from another solar system is coming in, and one of our conscious, I guess you could call it beings or contraptions, whatever you want to call right, it, is leaving out yeah, at the exactly. same time. I never thought of that, that it's happening exactly. exactly. I never exactly. thought, so to actually, that, that, that is a great point. I never thought of it, yeah. that as we're sending something beyond our right. solar system, something is coming in. That's not an accident. That's not an accident, no. And I'd like to know how they can send something all the way out there right. with the batteries going, and in a half hour I have to charge my iPhone. I know. And okay. that was in the 70s, too. Yeah, so it's possible. Yeah, that, yes, yeah, there was something from 79 that left. Yeah. So, how, so obviously we're not being given any of the real information in the, on the deepest level right. that our scientists have gathered and gained, uh, and, and the military has gathered and gained for so many years, but that's a whole other s s s discussion that sounds very paranoid, but <laughs> the thing is that we're not being told a tenth of what's really going on. Which is what is funny to me in the scientific community, how they take Pluto off the planet list because it's so funny, it's like the denial of wanting to know the truth. It's like an interesting paradoxal uh, thing in my opinion because with not wanting to accept Pluto is not wanting to accept the truth or take away the truth from people is what Pluto represents in many ways. I received from NASA, unasked for, uh, I guess the public anybody could have it, but for some reason they offered it to me, I don't know right. why. Uh, a book called a uh, Archaeology, Anthropology, and Interstellar Communication wow. that they have been working on since 1952. <laughs> and there were a lot of pros and cons about whether or not it's possible, but I wondered why they were sending it to me. I don't know. Right. Uh, but it, 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 it clearly stated that that is, and many scientists agreed that it was da it's dangerous to look for signs of life because historically any time an advanced civilization contacted a, 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 lesser, a lesser developed right. civilization, the lesser developed civilization was wiped out very quickly. Something huge is happening to humanity. It's not crazy to investigate it, but it is certainly worth everybody's, uh, everybody's interest. It's in, it's in everybody's yeah. interest to find out, ask questions, what are they doing to the weather? What's going yeah, on what to the weather? On. It's absolutely crazy. What is going on with the military? What is the military really doing? The biggest budget that was ever cut for the military just went down this year. And the whole idea that it's all one person's fault was created yeah. crazy. I think that they, whoever they blame is just the clown that's been hired to right. warm up the crowd before and the, the clown main that wants event. to be the clown. That's right. That's right. You know, that's and right. so, because, you know, all, that's why I love doing astrology with you, to, to be able to talk about it, because it's even more than astrology. I think astrology, of course, has unlimited bounds, but I think that what you cross into with your horoscopes and everything is, is a whole other realm. And I don't even know what to call that realm. Well, what we're doing is we're trying to reach deeply into people on their most personal level to help them with their life. Right, right, Practically, right. their life, their money, their right. everything. At the same time, we're trying to open up their heads yeah. so that they actually look up and see what's happening right above their heads at the same time. And that's a great task for us to do it. 
and it's a serious task, but we also have fun doing it. We do have fun doing it, and I, I, I love doing it and talking about it with you because I feel like I can just talk forever about it. And we, you've been a very, very powerful source of love and information and friendship that has kept me going in my astrology life and career and uh, I wouldn't be here you know without that that energy and that life force that's that nice to say but you would be here you're an exalted being you would you would you would you're, you would be here you would be here you it wouldn't be the same though I'm glad to hear that I'm glad that I have a presence in your life but you do. It, yeah I, I think that uh, it's a it's a key the key to happiness, of course, is recognizing that nothing is forever and still being able to enjoy anything like this particular conference. Right. That's true. Well, when it comes to me and my favorite to go to for astrology, it's Michael Luton. Thank you. And I truly mean that. Thank you can go you. to his website, michaelluton.com. It's really cool because not only can you go there, but you do little daily uh, horoscopes, yeah, you, do, do, do you do sun signs, you do everything, you do special reports when certain planets are moving or certain aspects are happening, and they're really powerful, and they're very, very intense, and that's why I love them, and uh, you can go there, he's got a lot of different products, and always, you know, getting a reading from you is great, and he always recommends a phone call, too, it's on your website. Yeah, I, you know? I there's nothing, and people don't like to travel anymore but I always like somebody in my office and prefer people sometimes can't get to New York City or I'm not in their city and so it's Skype or FaceTime but there's nothing like people being with each other that's, that's what I true. like yeah like that's what I love about this conference oh, yeah. everybody's here I know right behind these cameras people don't even realize the hundreds of people that are right around it's us right, right, right around us right now yeah well, I appreciate you, and I thank you for everything, and you've always been a great supporter of me as a friend, and I really appreciate that. Thank you, David. Thank you, thank Michael. You. Thank you. Take care.